nice catch. Ahead on early birds, the Falcons say they're getting closer, but it's time for the results to show it. We are, it is what it is, and your mindset's got to be, we, we got to go get a win. We'll get you ready for a showdown in the Big Apple, plus one-on-one -on -one with Atlanta's Swiss Army Knife on offense, and why getting three points takes three players being on the exact same page. That and more coming your way on early birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ, I'm Justin, 0-2, and, and it's time for Big Blue. Let's get things started with the opening drive and shock. The Falcons are now the third worst team in the NFL at converting third downs. Right at 31%, not where you want to be. And they couldn't pick up that third and short when they had momentum down in Tampa. We saw how that turned out. So what's not working? You know, Justin, it's a mentality thing, especially on short yardage situations. You really put that all on the offensive line and the backs, tight ends, to be able to just move a guy one yard one way or another. If you're not able to do that, that speaks volumes. You have to find a way to just get some penetration and push them backwards instead of them getting the penetration on our end. So we have to do a better job of being more physical at the point of attack and making that a priority to win those downs. And DJ, I'm glad you mentioned short yardage because that was a big talk this past week in Flowery Branch. Not allowing penetration in the middle um, and, you know, getting some better push and then, you know, trying to find ways to, you know, get us in space. First place I started myself, hey, what could I have done better schematically? We got to get into a situation. They stopped us twice on third and one and fourth and one. And we to make a step, we got to make an improvement there. All right, continuing along the opening drive. Darn it, Daniel. I can't I can't say the real meme. Much to our producer Miles' chagrin. Sorry, Chuck. Uh, but we're talking about Daniel Jones, who seems to be making a leap forward in year two at quarterback for the Giants. He's also the team's leading rusher, which is probably not ideal for New York. DJ, what have you seen out of him? Yeah, you know what? I think he's taking his game to the next level. He's continued to be the leader they want him to. He's completing 63% of his passes right now. Mm. So he's accurate, and he's doing what they're supposed to. When you're the... You know, leading rusher on your team is a quarterback spot. That's really not ideal, but they're hoping Saquon can slowly but surely come along and be the guy that they expect to take some of that pressure off him. But he's been playing really solid so far. And here's Daniel Jones talking about his approach to the season. Every week's different, and, and uh, my goal is to, to prepare as well as I can and, and play as well as I can every week. Try to be prepared and uh, ready to go every week. Just know you watch film every day and you basically see him running 70 yard, 80 yard touchdowns by itself. So you just know you can't let him out of the pocket. All right, and as we wrap up the opening drive, you got to get win number one first. But Atlanta's next three opponents, including the Giants, have a combined record right now of one and five. And Shock, this seems like a stretch that will really determine the tone of this season. Yeah, no doubt, because like you mentioned, after this, it gets a little bit tougher and the quarterbacks get a little bit better. You have to find a way to get these wins when they're there for you. Everybody thought you should probably got that win versus Philadelphia, didn't work out that way. But now you have some opponents in the NFC East that are trying to find themselves. And then you talk about playing the Jets as well. We saw what Wilson did in that ball game. We see that through a bunch of interceptions. You get a rookie there. Washington doesn't have their starting quarterback. So an ideal time for you to finally get into a groove and say, all right, let's get some wins under our belt and start feeling confident about where we're going this season. Falcons hope that starts tomorrow, taking on the Giants here on Fox 5. Welcome into Early Birds alongside former Falcons and UGA quarterback DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. And Shock, these are two teams both looking for their first wins. The Giants are no pushovers. Yeah, Giants are no pushover. They're continuing to try to get their first one. They probably felt they should have gotten the win last week if it wasn't for a <sighs> false start there where, you know, obviously you get another chance at that field goal. But this is a team that's looking to be confident and get a win just like the Falcons are. So they're going to bring their best, going to be at home. So they expect good things to happen as well. Well, Shaco, throw on your cape and get ready to defend Gotham. <laughs> Go warm up the Telestrator. We'll see All you right. in a few. But first, the Falcons' next kickoff return for a touchdown will be their first since 2010. Cordero Patterson's next kickoff return for a touchdown will give him the record for most kickoff return TDs in NFL history. He'd hold that record alone. In fact, Patterson is the only NFL player to have at least seven career rushing, receiving, and kickoff return touchdowns. The last guy to have six each of those, Gale Sayers. And to think, Patterson almost didn't play high school football. In fact, he didn't at all in ninth or 10th grade until his school's quarterback talked him into joining the team. And pressure, trouble, gonna dump it. Oh, one-hander, Patterson is in for the touchdown. I was 
was just trying to be a student at, at the time, man. You know, sports is just, it's just faded on me. You know, I felt like I lost the love for the game. But I'm thankful, you know, he came up to me because, you know, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at right now, you know, without their encouragement. So, you know, the love for the game came back and it's not going nowhere. He's in the clear. One of the places you are right now is tied for the all-time record in kickoff return touchdown. How important would it be for you to hold that record by yourself? Oh, man, it would be awesome. I mean, you know, the, those two guys that's, that's tied with me right now, you know, I done looked up to those guys a lot, you know, watching all their kickoff returns, you know, and see how can I get better. So beating that record, you know, it would mean a lot to me. But at the end of the day, I got to give credit to all those guys out there that's blocking for me. Devin Hester might go into the Hall of Fame next year. Looking at your resume, four-time All-Pro, 2010, all decade team currently tied maybe one day will hold the kickoff return touchdown record by yourself and years left to play do you think one day you could have a hall of fame resume for the record Devin has will go in the hall of fame you know and that guy there is just unreal man the things he did oh, but man, I, I don't know man i don't i don't get into all that hall of fame stuff i let those guys with the numbers and whoever votes you in they, they vote you in your role in this offense this year it's just two games i know it but averaging over 30 yards rushing and over 30 yards receiving per game those would both be career highs. I know it's a small sample. Do you like how the, the team's using you so far? Oh, I love it. You know, what guy in his right mind don't want to go out there and get the ball and have fun while you're doing it? You know, I'm a guy, man, I, I love this game. Every game for like nine years now, I throw the football in the stands to the fans. You know, people come from all, all around the country, you know, to see us play. So it could be their first or they could be their last game team. So I just try to go out there and just have fun. The way Arthur Smith and the way Matt Ryan were talking about you when we heard from a little while ago, Matt said you're one of the best athletes he's been able to play alongside. Do you feel like your best offensive football could still be in front of you? Hey, I'm 30. You know, that, I'm 30 I'm right now. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I feel like I got a lot of football left. Matt saying that, you know, he, he know he's one of the best athletes. He can run, he can pass, him and Arthur. You know, just, just learning from those guys each and every day is just a blessing. Good cut, but now Patterson breaks the tackle. Matt did say it's sometimes a little weird turning around and handing the ball to a guy in an 84. If you're, <laughs> if you're mostly a running back now, did you ever think about a different number? I did, man, but, you know, I got into 84 high school when I first started playing football because my sister was born in 84. You know, 84 been available for everywhere I've been, so I say, just why not just keep that number? It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room, so cut the lights and let's get started. When you go back and you think about what happened in the Tampa Bay game, you think about some of the good things that happened. And one of the good things was red zone execution. In game one, you were not that good in the red zone. You only scored six points. In this ball game, you did a great job inside the red zone. And I'm going to show you how they created some good plays inside the red zone. Now, first off, I want to talk about what's happening up front. They're going to go cover zero. Cover zero means an all-out blitz. Up here, look at all these guys at the line of scrimmage. They have eight guys at the line of scrimmage. We only have seven guys. Five offensive linemen, one tight end, and one back. So that means one guy is going to be unaccounted for, and that's going to be the guy that's free run against Matt Ryan. He has to get the ball out of his hands, and he understands that. At the top is where we're going to win here. Calvin Rudd is going to run a smaller, shallow cross right into, right underneath this particular defensive back. OZ is going to come up, and he's going to run what's called a back end line. Now, this is great versus man or zone simply because they can't be right. Even if they try to pass it off, you take my man, you're still going to win. So as the play gets started, I'm going to show you exactly what happens. All out blitz comes from up here. All out blitz here. There's the one free runner. Now look at the top at the top up here. Here's the, here's the isolation route you want to look at here. Calvin's coming free right now, but they tried to pass it off. So he's saying, you take my man, I take your man. Okay, if he climbs on him, now he has the leverage on him. You see OZ on the back end? He's coming across this back end line. Now he has an opportunity to get free and come out, and now if they want to throw it to him, he can throw it to him as well. Just a really great job, really nice play here, and you can see the execution here is superb. Superb execution in the red zone created by formation and play design is why the Falcons were able to score a touchdown here, and we need more of this happening tomorrow versus the Giants. All right, Shock, thanks so much. More to come on Early Birds. Joe Hamilton asks Kirby Smart, what are you doing, coach? Plus, the timing has to be all right because we have to get the ball off. Young Way Koo has the magic leg, but it takes teamwork to split the uprights. He'll explain when we go deep next on Early Birds. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you.
Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery, today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. All right, we welcome in our college football expert, Joe Hamilton, former Georgia Tech quarterback. And let's start off talking quarterbacks out in Athens. Talk about champagne problems here for the undefeated dogs. But, Joe, what was Kirby Smart thinking? He had JT Daniels rolling. He brings in Stetson Bennett. Is he playing with fire with the quarterback room here? I absolutely think he's playing with fire, and I do not understand it. This was not the fourth quarter. This was not the third quarter. You're talking about early in the game, up 14 nothing, uh, and JT Daniels is rolling. And I thought they broke rhythm a little bit by bringing, you know, Stetson Bennett in. And, but I'll tell you this, if it's transparency, if they're communicating, I'm talking about Coach Monkin and Coach Kirby Smart, it might not be as a big of a problem as we're looking at it, but I would not like it if I'm JT Daniels trying to get to the NFL, trying to put up stats, because that's a stat game when you're playing against a lesser opponent. I would not be happy at all if I'm JT Daniels. All right, let's talk a little bit about Georgia Tech. Let's go back to what you you said last week about the Jackets game against Clemson. Me, personally, because you asked me a direct question. I want to come out of halftime with at least Clemson starters playing and the game is not in hand already. All right, so, Joe, you were hoping that Clemson starters had to play in the second half. What do you know? They had to play right down until the end of the game. One, what did you see from Georgia Tech? And two, nobody likes a moral victory, but this wasn't a bad one. What's the next step to get them over the hump? Well, number one, I saw Coach Thacker and Coach Collins put together a really, really good game plan defensively. Had DJU kind of patting the ball, had DJU second guessing themselves. Uh, I like how Tech is getting bigger, stronger, faster in the trenches. And offensively, yes, you didn't get the big game, but still, Kyrie McCowan played well. I think over 80 yards uh, receiving. Uh, Jordan Yates settled in. And I'm so happy that Coach Pat Node did not have a package for Jeff Sims. He would be sitting in the round message. He let that guy dropped back 33 times, and he wasn't looking over the shoulder. Outstanding. Now, going forward, you can't let a moral victory, so to speak, against Clemson cost you to have a letdown against North Carolina. It's going to be in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, ability to be on a national stage. Now, are you a better team than North Carolina? I'm not saying that, but I want you to continue to compete, continue to grow, and understand that the Coastal, in my opinion, a lot of people will laugh at me, is still wide open. Tag trying to build off that against Clemson. Last thing for you, Joe. Alabama didn't quite look invincible last week. Oklahoma's had some stumbles. Ohio State has a loss. Clemson has a loss. Who is a team that you could see sneaking in, crashing the playoff party with those powerhouses, not exactly getting off the perfect start? Penn State and Nittany Lions. James Franklin has been recruiting outstanding talent. Um, I think he's going to be able to be in any game. Uh, Beaver Stadium, that's going to always be a home, uh, home field advantage. I don't think Ohio State defensively, they're not invincible. So now when you look at that Penn State having a big game against Auburn, turning the corner, it seems like, I think that's the team that's going to be knocking at the corner and you're going to have to have to play and believe that you can beat Ohio State and knock them off. So you can't have luck and hope and guess. You're going to have to go out there and beat those guys. Feels like it's a little bit more wide open in the playoff picture than maybe it's been in past years, which is good for us as fans. Yes, Makes every absolutely. week exciting for sure. Joe Hamilton, thank you so much. And DJ, we'll send it over to you. All right, appreciate it, fellas. All right, most of us think about field goals in the terms of yards. When you're the guy doing the kicking, you're thinking about inches, seconds, and even rotations of the football. It takes a lot of things going right for a field goal to go through the uprights. It's time to go deep with the Falcons kicker, Young Way Koo. I mean, it's really like game of inches when it comes to kicking for us. Um, it is a unit thing. So people really don't understand what goes into it from a snapper standpoint to the holder, to the kicker, like talk about the science of it. So Josh knows exactly how many times the ball spins in terms of the laces. So it's like, it's either three and a half or three and a quarter. So he can make the adjustments so the holder catches the ball with the laces out so he doesn't have to spin them. And if, if he does, then the holder has an idea of like, all right, that's his usual miss. So he has to turn the laces this way. 
or the other way. The timing has to be all right because we have to get the ball off, you know, within 1.3 or seconds or under. Little things like that, so everything has to be in a unison for, for all that to work. And I always put it into a golf analogy. So let's say you're about to tee off with a driver and you expect me to pull, tee the ball up at the perfect height at the right spot and you have in your backswing and that's kind of the analogy for me. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Welcome back into Early Birds. Included on the Falcons injury report for the first time this year, unfortunately, a concussion. Cornerback A.J. Terrell dealing with one after the last game in Tampa Bay. It's an injury NFL teams have a strict protocol on how to handle. Here's Falcons team physician Kyle Hammond in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. As soon as we suspect there's a concussion, um, my um, partner, uh, Dr. Brandon Mines, who's our head medical doctor, will you know get involved because he manages our concussions alongside the UNC, which is the unaffiliated neuro consultant. And they have a very strict concussion protocol, whereas they will then, the two of them in a quiet environment, along with watching the video, along with the uh, athletic trainer spotter that's up in the booth, use all that information and then start talking to the athlete to make a determination if they indeed possibly had a concussion. They go through their questionnaires of the concussion protocol questionnaires, and if that's determined that they think they have a concussion, then they will go back to the locker room for a more formal evaluation for the true kind of concussion computer testing that we do, and then that player would be removed from the game. If on the sideline evaluation they are determined to not have sustained a concussion, then they will be cleared by those designated personnel to then return to the game. All right, more to come on early birds. Many Falcon fans saw the game right here on Fox 5 last Sunday, but some of the best moments were also heard on the radio. We bring you the calls of the game from our friends at the Falcons Radio Network next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Well, even in defeat, the Falcons delivered some big plays last weekend against the Bucks, giving our friends over at 92.9 The Game some exciting calls. Here's your calls of the week, courtesy of the Falcons Radio Network and photojournalist Victor Prieto. Here's Ryan, takes the snap. Matt up in the pocket to his right. Oh, he flipped it to Patterson, who will score. How about Ryan? Just a little touch pass over the top of a would-be defender, and then Cordero Patterson into the end zone with a touchdown. Brady, straight drop. With time, sack, ball out. Recovered Walker. Atlanta's got it. Dante Holy Fowler. smokes, Dante Fowler clubbed it out of Tom Brady's hand and Michael Walker scoops it up. Snap to Ryan, Tampa brings four. Matt got to cut it loose, pits the catch. First down and more in the big fella to the 37 and a half yard line before Antoine Winfield finally grabbed him by the legs and said, please, sir, no more. Godwin and Brown to the left. Brady sacked. Deion Jones. Ball of the near hash is snapped to Ryan in the gun. Blitz coming thrown. Caught Ridley. Touchdown Atlanta. Ryan stood in there against a flurry of pressure and threw a bullet to Ridley. Brady on a straight drop again. Under duress and will go down. And that is Marlon Davidson. How about that? Oh, that is very cool. Giants and Falcons tomorrow afternoon try to make some more highlights. Game on Fox 5. Join us at 11.30 p.m. Dirty Bird Report where we'll wrap it all up. DJ, real quick, if the Falcons get win number one, who's the player that helps push them over the top? Offensive line all day. Keep Matt clean is the only answer. Let's go, baby. That's what they need. We'll join you next week here at 8.30 a.m. and every Saturday for Early Birds for our quarterback, DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.